Welcome to Wednesday Evening Bible Study here at Expedition Church of the Triad, where you belong, you belong here, you need to come be planted here, called here, grow here, and be ignited here. Hallelujah. Because at Expedition Church, we're living a life of victory forged by faith in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Winning the lost, changing the nations, healing the sick, and carrying the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost and hurting world. Hallelujah. We'd love for you to be a part. Glory to God. Let's jump right into our Bible studies. We continue on our series, Being Redeemed um, from poverty, Spiritual Death, Poverty, and Sickness. And reading from Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, our foundation text. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Glory to God. And he has redeemed us. And then, of course, we read Deuteronomy chapters uh, 1 through 14 and then highlighted chapters, verses, I mean, chap verses 1 through 14 in Deuteronomy 28 and highlighted, <laughs> highlighted verses 15 through 61, okay, through the end of the chapter. And um, we found out that sickness is part of the curse. And um, we just need to be getting up in the mornings and going, I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the curse. Since Jesus, he set me free. For sickness, I've health, and for poverty, wealth. Jesus has ransomed me. Amen? Hallelujah. What might Stay on that. Let's just do that together. I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the curse. Since Jesus, he set me free. For sickness of help and for poverty wealth, since Jesus, he ransomed me. Come on. I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the curse. Since Jesus, he set me free. For sickness of help and for poverty wealth, since Jesus, he ransomed me. And, and then we used to go, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Scripture courses with Pastor Ed. Now you may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I can make a glad racket unto the Lord. How about you? Some of y'all can sing. I can make a glad racket. Hallelujah. All right. So we've already covered spiritual death and we've covered poverty. And so now we'll look tonight into sickness. Okay. Uh, sickness is a part of the curse. We thought we just kind of discussed that. Verses 15 through the end of the chapter, they lay all the things on you that if you don't obey God, you go whoring after other gods and uh, all these curses will come on. I mean, all these things will come on you and they were all curses. They weren't good. Not one of them was good. I mean, you know, the emrods and, uh, you know, boils and all that stuff. Um, the best we can figure out is, is the emrods were, were uh, um, hemorrhoids. That just, that just don't even sound good, okay? Anything that he had named in the book of law, that would come on you. Hallelujah. Amen. But, you know, God goes on and says in that uh, later in the book of Exodus that he is the Lord that healeth thee. He is our Jehovah Rapha. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. So sickness is part of the curse. We just read that Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus bore our sicknesses on the cross. Aren't you glad? Amen. amen. Isaiah, let's go over to Isaiah chapter 53. What are you going to the Old Testament for? Because the New Testament is founded on the, um, the Old Testament. With new revelation, it's a new and a better covenant, Hallelujah! But we we have to learn. So we we learn it was, it's a continuation of what God was doing throughout the old and moving into the new, Hallelujah! We just don't discard it, cut it out, and do it. You wouldn't understand a lot of the things that the Bible talks about. Amen. I mean, when when um, there's reference as 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 it's written. Jesus say as it's written in the Psalms or in the prophets. Well, if you didn't have the Old Testament, you wouldn't know he's talking about. Okay? But Isaiah 53, starting in verse 1, it says, Who hath believed our report? 
And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him, that is, Jesus shall grow up before God, as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. That, and, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now stop. This basically says you don't have to be a GQ, bed to head, tunic wearing, skinny jean wearing, hip, cool, sharp, good looking to preach the gospel. Amen. You know, you know there's enough, there's a, the world does that. They take people who can't sing, auto-tune them, and market them because they look good. Or they, they, they're marketable. Except some of them, I wonder, what were they thinking? Anyway, you know, but anyway, it, you know, we, we, we in the world, the world wants to market uh, beauty or a certain look. And that, that, that's not what drew people to Jesus. It, it wasn't his uh, debonair looks. It wasn't he was the, you know, the cover for GQ magazine 10 months in a row. Y'all hear you going home. It had nothing to do with that. Okay? Um, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, glory to God, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. And he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our sin, griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, back up here where it says uh, he's a man of sorrows, our pains. Uh, and acquainted with grief, okay? And so it says he saw us and, and, um, and acquainted with grief. The word grief is sicknesses in the Hebrew, okay? Makab and koile. Now, C-H-O-L-I, I believe, um, is at, and, I, and, this, and M A K K O B. Now, I get a mix up which one's which, okay, because I don't have them transferred to this Bible. I'm going to have to get a transfer so I can, I'll know which one's which. Okay? But those are the two words for Hebrew. And one meaning um, sorrows, the other meaning sicknesses. Now they translate, it's, it's very interesting, they translated the one uh, sickness as grief and then translated the one that was sorrows as, you know, which is really grief in the Hebrew. They translated it sor um, sorrows. I mean, um, yeah, sorrows. So here he says he's acquainted with sicknesses. Amen. And then he has carried our, surely he hath borne, notice it this here, borne our sicknesses. Grief is in the Hebrew sicknesses. Okay. And carried our griefs. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities, but the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. Amen. We are healed. Glory to God. And so we have here the prophet prophesying, this is Jesus on the cross. Amen. You see, um, if you back up to the previous chapter, which is really not the previous chapter, uh, they, I don't know why they jumped in here at... Um, Verse, you know, right at the verse 15 of the previous chapter and started this Isaiah 53 1 because really the, the um, verse 13 of the previous chapter is where it should start. Now remember, they were added by men. It says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and very high. As many are astonished at his visage, was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So that he shall sprinkle many nations, the kings will shut their mouths at him, for they which have been told they shall, shall see, shall they see, and that which they have not heard, which they had not heard, they shall consider. Who hath believed their report? This is a continuation. And it notes his visage is so marred, more than any man. See, this is the cross, where he is dehydrated, lost about twenty-five percent of his body weight. He's taken three scourgings. Of a, a Roman scourge about three different people. So one, one scourge about three different people doing it. Thirty-nine stripes each. And if you saw the Passion of Christ, uh, that was that was very realistic. He actually got uh, they had big thick leather on his back. 
and it wrapped around and actually cut his stomach. Uh, Jim Caviezel. It actually, he did actually get cut during that scene. Um, very, very whatever. Um, beaten with rods, beard plucked out. That's the natural pain he was going through. Plus the sin and the sickness of us all coming on him. Why do you think that the dark darkness had to cover the earth? They couldn't look at it. They could not look at what was taking place as sin and sickness was being laid on him. He carried those things and bore them at that moment. It would have been, un, the mind couldn't have handled it. Okay? And then, but he, he by his stripes, we were healed. Okay, actually it says we are healed. Prophecy. Uh, we move over to 1 Peter 2, 24. Who is else, who is own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Now, Isaiah prophesying of the coming event, Peter looking back at the coming events, declaring that there's been a fulfillment of this prophecy that there was one, one coming that by his stripes we're, going, we're healed. And Peter says it's been done. We were healed. He carried our sicknesses. He bore them. Carried them away from us. Glory to God. Amen. And um, Matthew 8, 16, 17, when Eden was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the, Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, I read, I always like to put this in here because people go, that was talking about the spiritual sickness of, I mean, yeah, the spiritual sickness of sin. Well, right there it says it was sick. Amen. You know, they got their theological degree. They got their, went to their um, denominations, theological cemetery. They got taught everything how God don't do. You know? The I can't bunch. We need to be the I can bunch. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen? I mean, we used to say, my God can do anything, anything, yes, anything. He can do anything. But he already did something. Not only can he heal, he's already had Jesus bear the sickness. Amen? Hallelujah. So, here we have a declaration of Old Testament prophecy, New Testament fulfillment, amen, and codifying into the plan of redemption, healing. You know, you, know, you hear that term used in legal, legal things, uh, something's codified, it's, it's made, it it's becomes part of the law, okay? It's not just a whim, it's codified, it's, it's law, all right? Well, Peter codified healing in writing what he wrote as part of the plan of redemption. It's a legal fact in the things of God. Healing belongs to us. Say glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, um, and then we have an example of that fulfillment, meaning and, and bearing on physical sicknesses, not the spiritual sickness of sin. So you get born again. You do not get healed when you're saved. Your spirit does not get healed. It's different. Redemption of the spirit is the new birth. Are you here? Redemption of the mind is the renewed mind through the word of God. Redemption of the physical body ultimately will be the transformation at the return of Christ. But in the, in the interim time, there's been, uh, we get to, a walk in an aspect of that redemption with divine healing. Amen. Can you say amen? You're not going to live forever in this body. One of these days, it's going to wear out. And you're going to cut beef a boogie and split. And won't none of us be able to keep you back. I'm out of here. Okay? So, um, Jesus... 
as we said, I think we said this Sunday, Jesus was an example of the will of God. I only do those things which I see my Father do. I don't know how it becomes so easy to negate what the Scriptures plainly state for your narrative. Well, I, my grandmama always said, you never know what the Lord's going to do. Hello? Well, you know, the Lord can heal. I've seen some people, he, but you know, it's not always his will. Amen. I've heard it, I've heard it said. I've heard it said more than once. You know? Yeah, and just never know. So we pray. Lord, heal them if it be thy will. But if not, prepare the family of this soon to this soon to be bereaved family of the loss of their loved one. And they'll put more faith in God comforting the upcoming comfort for the family than they do in trying to get the person well. So they don't have to be bereaved. Hello. Well, they say they've been sold a bill of goods. We've taught that was spiritual. God has reasons. That's a cop-out. 90% of the time, that is a cop-out. Because nobody, nobody wants, some, for some reason, people don't want to spend enough time finding out what God's will is or enough time seeking the Lord to get answers, amen, to get what they need from heaven. Um, and th listen, Good people, people who love Jesus. So we're not talking about, you know, some ingrate jerk. You know, you could, eat, I mean, in the natural, you can't go, well, I get that. They were just a jerk. You know? But it has, it's not that. It is not knowing what God's will is. And it's already plain. But because we've been taught narratives, you know, I was I was with a relative old in the past year or so, and um, we were we were visiting, and I was going to wash clothes on a Sunday. Now you can't do that. Why? It's Sunday, and you know that's a sin. I said, "Ain't a sin." I said, "When the, when when the law was given, you, you, did you wash clothes yesterday? Because that was a sin." It was yesterday, not today. My mama said, I don't care what your mama said. It don't matter what mama said. I said, I said you're wrong. Nah, I, don't, I don't care. No, because no. mama said it. The, the Dr. Taylor doesn't know what he's talking about because mama said it. Couldn't wash clothes. And I, I, I got a little biffed. Because you think, you know, you think you know, you don't know nothing. I mean, we, we could just go have scripture words here and you, I'd blow you out the water. So, fine. I started to get up, go get the clothes and run down to the laundromat. And say, I went more than half a mile. I sinned. But I didn't do it here at the house. I'm going home today. I'm going to drive safe. But you're not going to tell me not to go because today's a Sabbath. And for me to go more than a certain distance on today is a sin. Did you get food from the restaurant? Because you caused all them people to sin because they cooked on a Sunday. You went and ate their food. Uh-huh. You ate the food of sinners. Dog, dirty, rotten sinners, and you partook of their delectable, sinful delight. How did I get on talking about that? Anyway, um, do what now? Well, yeah, I've had some wonder I got way over there. Um, oh, grandma, mama said, mama said, you know, mama, our relatives said, you know, grandma always said. You know, well, grandma told me I needed to be rooted and grounded in holiness. That ain't what the Bible says. 
And they, they meant the denomination. They didn't mean just being holy. They meant Pentecostal holiness. Holiness. <laughs> Amen. We need, to be, you know, we need to be rooted and grounded in love is what the Bible says. Now, we need to be holy. I get. I'm, I don't disdain. I don't. I don't disregard that. But the word. We need to say what the word. The word says: be rooted and grounded in love, not in holiness. <laughs> you know. But you know, they'll. You know, because relatives who've been in the church, and they love the Lord. We don't. We, we're not going to disregard the, their love for the Lord. They serve the Lord. They love the Lord. They're faithful to the church, but they've been taught something, and they just took hold of it and don't want to let go of it, you know, that God doesn't always heal. It's not always God's will to heal. You never know what God's going to do. I had a woman argue. I just got saved. You, got, you can't imagine how brash I was as a new believer. Can you, Jerry? <laughs> Jerry, you're supposed to say no. I was arrogant brash, you know. And I argued with a, with a woman in front of the church for 15 minutes because she was suffering like Job, had Paul's thorn, and was like the man born blind, all put together in one person. I thought, boy, you must know some Bible because of the abundance, because of the abundance of revelation did this thorn come on me. You're saying you're like Paul. And pride goes before destruction. Yeah. I'm thinking, Lord Jesus, you all of, you're all of them? You know? Knows they want none of them. Mis misrepresenting what the scriptures talk about in all three of those instances. Okay? And um but people will believe stuff because that's what they, they everybody believes, and they, and they don't search out, and they'll and they won't be able to go. Well, the Bible says that the Lord won't heal, or they won't go. Well, Jesus put cancer on somebody when he was on the earth, can't do it. What do they go by? Their own experiences. Well, I prayed, we prayed for sister so and so. Not a better Christian ever in the church, and they died. Okay, so sister so-and-so, and I, again, can't argue whether or not they love the Lord as much as they said or not. Maybe it may have been the best Christian ever in the church, you know, maybe now be in the church hall of fame as the best Christian ever. Okay, but that $4.50 will get you a sorry cup of coffee at Starbucks, <laughs> a small one. Won't get a big one for four fifty. Just see, I, Jesse, Jesse doesn't like for me to pick on Starbucks. You know, burnt coffee so it's consistent everywhere, and then they loaded it with sugar and flavoring. So you think you got a really good cup of coffee? You got a really good cup of sugar. Oh, Jesse, just hush. I don't do sugar. I do sugar substitutes with essential oils. I love you, honey. Yeah, she will. De she'll defend her position. Kind of like that John McClintock, John Way. I said what I said, and I'll say it to the, uh, to the death. <laughs> yeah. Just for the record, what did you say? <laughs> All righty. Anyway. But because people believe narratives that they were taught and won't ever change because mama said it. I mean, you may as well be carrying the Holy Grail, the Shroud Turin. I mean, forget the Bible. We have, we have Mama. We can quote Mama. And, and, and this, these, these are habits we picked up. Listen, thank God she loved the Lord. Thank God she served Jesus. Thank God she went to heaven. But it don't make them right, especially when revelation comes forward. You're to let the Word guide your life, not Past, past statements by other people, especially if you find out from the Word, they're inaccurate. You can, you can appreciate their 
service to the Lord. You can appreciate their faithfulness to God. You can appreciate a lot of things. But, you know, um, you can't always appreciate the, the, the era of what they thought and believed. They, you know, they just didn't know any better. And they were, they were taught it by others, and they just believed it, and they, that's how they went. And you couldn't change them. Mm -mm. I mean, you may as well go out there and spit in the wind. Amen. Pull the mask off the old lane, old lane ranger. Tug on Superman's cape. Hello. And not mess around with Jim. <laughs> he was bad, bad Leroy Brown. <laughs> Baddest man in the whole town. I ain't going to say the rest of it. All right. But Jesus, I got on all of this because I said, it, it, it just surprises me sometimes how people can look at the Word of God and not see what's so plainly there and accept a pre, a, a pre declared narrative from a family member or a beloved minister. Not all ministers are right. They're not right on everything. I've had to change over time. I've had to say, I used to teach this. I was wrong. I, I messed. I didn't see it in the, the light that it really was in. In prayer last night, I got revelation on something about praying in the Holy Ghost I'd never seen before. And I, it's not like I've been in ministry 4.2 years. Over 42. And I saw something for the first time ever. I heard Dad Hagen. I was at Rama. And um, Lester Summerall was ministering. We had a week with Brother Summerall. <laughs> Not a bad week to have, is it? And Brother Summerall ministered. And um, the next week after Brother Summerall was gone, Brother Hagen came out into our, what we call share and praise. Or share and praise. Or maybe our class, maybe our, our faith library class. Came out. And he, he started, he, he got, kind of was just kind of getting started. He just stopped and he said, you know, Brother Summerall said something last week I thoroughly disagreed with. I know what he was talking about because I I, well, I kind of went, eh, when he said it. But I didn't stop listening to him. Okay, well, I don't miss, maybe see that, but that was just, you know, well, that's that's not one of the things going to send you to hell, you know. And I didn't really see eye to eye on that, but that's okay because a lot of other good stuff uh, everywhere around it. And Brother Hagin said, now, 15 minutes later, he said something that gave me to an, an answer to something I've been praying about for 15 years that I didn't see in the Word, didn't understand, been praying about trying to get it. He said, if I shut him off when he said what I disagreed with, I'd have missed that. He'd been praying another 15 years. May have got to heaven and said, Lord, why did I ever, you ever give me an answer? Well, I told, Brother Summerall said it, but you won't listen because you got offended about something he said. And that could have been what happened. And that's why I always said, eat the hand, leave the stubble. He had tremendous respect for Brother Summerall and his ministry. That's why he was at Raymond teaching. Amen? Um, I had tremendous respect for him. You know, it, it was... Um, I mean, he was just, a, he was, a, he was a fireball. He was a pistol. No, he was a cannon. He was a bull in the china shop. All right? But Jesus is the demonstration of the will of God in his ministry. Now, let's analyze that for a second. Let's take some of the things that people believe and see if Jesus did them. Did Jesus take people's money away from them? Only ill-gotten gain at the temple where they made the house of God a den of thieves instead of a house of prayer. And he judged their action because they were, they were raping the people of their finances on their false pretenses, using their priestly position to do it. He didn't take the normal guy and steal his money. We can't find Jesus making people sick. I mean, think about it. Not one. Not one. 
I mean, the way you hear it, when it's, it's like in today's cultural, uh, church cultural mindset, maybe one gets healed and everybody else, God's got a reason why they don't get it. But we can't even find one in his ministry made him sick. Well, if he is a representation of the will of God, Jesus says in John 6, 38, for I came down from heaven not to do my will, my own will, but the will of him that sent me. You would think at least if God's will was to put something on people, he'd at least done one person. They walked away with leprosy when they came to him. Walk up to a normal guy standing on the street corner and Jesus goes, you ain't living right, boom, you got leprosy. One? Oh. Go up to another guy and say, your house is too big. You're now, you're now living in poverty. No. No. He, ca he causes blessings to come on. He gets out there with the 5,000 and the, and the 7,000 and multiplies more food than they have need of. Was it 12,000? I forgot the second one. It's five and seven or five and 12? Had seven baskets left over and 12 baskets. So it may have been five and seven. Okay. At least, Jesus, do one of those things so we can have good doctrine in the church. Because if, if you are, Jesus, the will of God in manifestation, and the church is teaching, that God's making people sick, God's killing people, God's making them poor, God's running roughshod over everybody, then we ought to at least have seen it at least one time in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Well, you know, he was the son. Yeah, and he told Philip that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Look in John 14. That's where he tells them this. Verse 9. Let's back up. Um, Philip says in verse 8, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it sufficeth us. And what that is, that's King Jimmy for that work. Show us the Father. That's enough for us. That'll be enough. And, Phil, and Jesus said, have I been so long with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not, I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Wow. Amen. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. This is when he goes on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than he, because I go unto my Father. <laughs> and I can't find them making folks sick. Hello? The one person who came to him to ask him, you know, uh, Lord, um, my daughter laughed at home, grieved with you, vexed of a devil, come and heal her. And he said, it's not meat to take the um, bread, and give, bread, the children's bread, and give it to the dogs. Why? She wasn't in covenant. She wasn't in the Old Testament. He, said, well, he is in ministry, his Old Covenant, and she's not under an Old Covenant ministry. She didn't, know, she didn't have a right to it. And she goes, yeah, Lord. But even the dogs get the crumbs up off of the master's table. <laughs> I'll be your dog. Just give me a crumb. That's all I need. Great is thy faith. I've not seen great faith like this in all of Israel. Go your way, be it unto you, even as you, even as you uh, believe. And the door is healed in that self-same hour. Hallelujah. What? He had to operate that under the covenant. She didn't have a covenant right to it. But she leaped over the Old Testament covenant and got to it by faith. 
Glory to God. Amen. Her faith got the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all here? Y'all gone home? Three of you are here anyway. And so if Jesus is that representation, then we can study his ministry. A man came to him, Lord, I know thou canst. If thou wilt, I know thou canst make me whole. Again, King Jimmy for, Lord, I know you can, but are you willing? I had a friend of mine from um, high school who came into town, and he had watched me on the, in our morning service. We were going to meet for um, uh, Starbucks after, later on that afternoon. He was in town for the ACC tournament that year. Huh? For Starbucks. Yeah, he went to eat. I, I, can go, I can go drink Starbucks. You know, I don't make a habit of it because it's not necessarily good coffee. I'd just rather have my instant coffee at home, Nescafe, decaf. Okay, it cost me twenty cents <laughs> and a little time. Amen. And I can make it however I want it: strong, weak. Add a little pure, heavy whipping cream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if I want some kind of flavor in, I'll go buy some, but I don't. I like it just with coffee. Anyway, and uh, he said, yeah, he said, he was laughing. He said, yeah, Eddie, you, he called me Eddie, high school. Eddie, that was hilarious, talking about the King Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, I like the King Jimmy. Not necessarily the 1611 King Jimmy, but the King Jimmy anyway. You couldn't even read 1611. You think you think this? You think the current King James is something? You have to try to read a sixteen eleven. I mean, you'll be you'll be speaking in tongues before you get done. How to, it's a wonder all those sixteen eleven King James people. You know, sixteen eleven. You ever seen that? Sixteen eleven KGV. That they aren't all tongue talkers. Filled with the Holy Ghost, because it takes. I'm just being silly now. All right. Acts 10 30. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He did good and healed. Notice what Luke says about this. He healed those that were oppressed of the devil. He healed those that were oppressed of the devil. Where's sickness? It's satanic oppression. Whether directly or indirectly, it's out of the realm of darkness. Satan brought it in. He perverted God's creation at the fall. And so, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. And we're out doing good with it and healing. That Holy, that Holy Ghost anointing and that power he used to do good and to heal. We, he could have, he could have put something on somebody. Are you here? He could have. But he didn't. We don't see. Well, what about the... Uh, deputy who was, you know, uh, went blind. You know what the Bible says? A mist came on him. He wasn't physically sick blind. A mist came on him. It was for a season. It went forever. Okay? So he wasn't struck blind with a sickness. A mist came on him and blinded him temporarily. But it wasn't, a, it, you know, it wasn't disease. God don't have disease. God ain't passing out disease. brought healing. The Bible doesn't say that the son of righteousness shall arise with cancer in his wings. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Amen. And God wants us to be well. First John 3, 2. Or one, I mean, 3 John 1, 2. Okay. 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray it. Now, King James says, I wish, but that's really in the Greek, pray. I pray above all things. 
stop. If you were writing this today, what would you write? I pray above all things that you will be humble before the Lord. That a spirit of humility would cover your life. Yes. He said, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now, what does John do? Because that first prosperity can't be soulish prosperity because he comes back later and, and correlates that prosperity to take place because of soul prosperity. I pray above all things you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. What are they talking about? Even as, you, as, as your mind is renewed to the word of God. Even as you understand God's will, even as you understand, I pray that you experience that prosperity. It's got to be financial or, you know, and other things, but not just a soul prosperity. You will prosper and be in health in correlation with your soul prospering. What? Renewing to the word of God, finding out the will of God, doing knowing the will of God, acting on the will of God in faith. Amen. Wish is, is a bad word there. It's, it's, it's just not a good, not a good word for translation there because then, you know, now, maybe in 1611, it, it carried a little bit different you know, meaning in the vernacular. Today, and you're twinkle, twinkle, little star in with it. Okay? Uh, singing somewhere over the rainbow. Y'all ever heard Isaiah, whatever his name is? Do, do, you know, somewhere over the rainbow. Bird, bird sing. 15-minute studio session. You ever heard? You ever heard it? I, lo I mean, I love that version. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Judy Garland. I mean, oh my Lord. I mean, you know, I got to get out of depression after she finishes. And I, I went with the booty. Okay, I get it. Um, his was the happy version <laughs> with his little ukulele. But John said, I pray above all things, of all the things he could pray. He didn't pray for them, God, to crush them and to melt them and to meld them into the image he wants them to be. He prayed they would prosper and be in health. Be in health. Be in health. God wants us to be, have health. Amen. Um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me, forgetting out all those benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. We've been reading that in our Sunday morning series. Hallelujah. And then Luke 6, 13. Let's go over there. We'll finish with this. Luke chapter 13. Verse 10, and he, that's Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift herself up. So she was, she, she was bowed over and couldn't stand up. Now, we don't know what this was. We don't know if it was a scoliosis. We don't know. We just don't know what it was. We just know she was bowed over. So it was, it was probably an endoskeletal issue. All right, where she couldn't stand up. And um, and when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now look what happened with her. She was straight, she stood up straight and glorified God. She didn't go in there and go, Woo, now I can party hearty, baby. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath. Wow. 
what a winner. <coughs> Just love the heart you have, dude. 18 years this woman's been coming to your temple. And you hadn't done doodly squat for her. Is that probably taking her money? Hello. And then have the council of the priests get together and wonder what she had done wrong, that she was born like that or happened that had to happen to her or whatever. And Jesus answered and said, him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? Now stop. I know you're more concerned about feeding the animals than you are about this woman who suffers every day. You hypocrite. Dirty, rotten, bottom-dwelling hypocrite. Lower than whale poop. That's pretty low. You know why? It's on the bottom of the ocean. Amen. Didn't care a thing about the woman. Just keeping their law, keeping their power, keeping their grip on the people. And then Jesus continues. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Now. Underline the phrase, being a daughter of Abraham. This is a reference to the fact she's a covenant person. She is under the Abrahamic covenant. She has, and if you go read the Abrahamic covenant, there was a right to healing. You could get healed, go show yourself to the priest, and they would declare you well, and you could go on about your business. But they didn't do it. Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? Ought not this covenant woman be loosed from this bond whom, sa whom Satan hath bound? He didn't say whom God had bound. He didn't say who my father put this on for this moment so I could show you that I'm the Messiah. It's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, ought not this covenant woman be loosed from uh, this bond who, who Satan hath bound 18 years? And shouldn't she be loosed on the Sabbath day? It don't matter what day it is. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. Amen. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and the people rejoiced for the glorious things that were done by him. What did, when we see healing taking place, what's happening? The people rejoice. The people honor God. The people praise God. They're grateful to God. It turns their heart toward the Lord. When they go and go and go and go and go and go and go, and they're told that God did it for a reason, it pushes people away. Why would God do that to that person? Why would God do that to that person? What did they do? Well, he has his reasons. Gagamagot. Hello? You know, I've already described that before, what, what Gagamagot looks like. Okay? People come up with things that are just Gagamagot. It's so repulsive against the character and the nature of God. He even gave him a covenant name. This woman was a daughter of Abraham living under the right to access Jehovah Rapha. The Lord thy healer, the Lord thy physician. Amen. Amen. Lord in, in, in the Hebrew is Y-H-W-H. -H. We still haven't got that up there with what that word is. I need it up there. It's like po painted on the wall. Y-H-W-H -H is a, you know, tetra of meta, whatever, Graham. Bill's not here to, to correct me. And I don't have my phone, so he can't text it to me. 
okay? Is the, com is the covenant name of God to his covenant people. Schofield says that it's his covenant name with his covenant people. And the hyphenated names, the, co the compound names, are an ever-increasing ever revelation of this covenant God to his people. Tetragram. Just a tetragram. <coughs> theonym. A theonym. It's, it's a tetragram. A tetragram. Theonym. Okay. The theonym. Tetragram. Y-H-W-H. Is meaning the covenant God. I am in covenant with you. And the hyphenates are an ever-increasing self-revelation of the covenant God to his people. The first compound covenant name of YHWH is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, the Lord thy physician. The first one. Not the Jehovah the Sith can do, the Lord thy righteousness. Not Jehovah Shalom, the Lord thy peace. Not Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. Amen. Hallelujah. Not Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is your provider. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. Of all the names that would become the first of the compound covenant names of Jehovah or Yahweh, however, what school of thought you are in as to how the vowels went in, okay? It's still the YHWH. Of all of the seven different ones, the first is Jehovah Rapha. It's pretty important to God to be their healer. Amen? And Jesus rebukes this arrogant, self serving, um, narcissistic priest. I don't have a lot of good things to say about this guy. Notice his name's not in the Bible. <laughs> God won't to impress with him either. <laughs> Amen. She's a covenant woman. She has a right to it. And Satan had bound her. Boy, but Jesus letting out some revelation there. Y'all were going around telling everybody that, they, you know, their parents had sinned or they had sinned. That's why they were like that. And Satan was the one doing the binding. But that's all right, guys, because my father anointed me with the Holy Ghost and power. And I've come, amen, to do good and to heal all that are oppressed of the devil. Amen. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. We've been redeemed from sickness. Can you say, say Hallelujah. All righty, all righty, praise God. Well, let's go ahead and receive tonight's offering. Let you people go home four minutes early. Don't forget, uh, Saturday night is the, Christ the church Christmas party. There was a uh, text sent out with a sign-up genius. Of how, to, you know, how, many, how many don't know how to use that? You hadn't tried. Okay. Really hadn't tried. Now, I'm going to tell you like Yoda told Luke, that is why you fail. <laughs> I'm teasing with you. Hallelujah. Listen, some of us folks, we, listen, I still struggle with some of this stuff. I'm like, they don't make it logical. You know. Okay, if you're going to write an app and you're going to do this, at least go take a programming, log a flow charting uh, course to make it logical. Instead of artsy, it's all over the place and nobody can find it. Y'all here, you go home. All right. Praise God. But it's on Sound of Genius. But you can just tell us what you're going to bring and we'll, we'll put it in there for you if you can't figure it out. Don't feel bad. I hadn't put anything in it either. I just tell the family, put it in there, what we're going to bring. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I got, I got. My, my district guys, I sent out a survey. Uh, I've got seven who still haven't sent anything back. I'm like, 
just click on perform and click four buttons and we're done. It's like it's not even a five minute event in your life for this survey. I, said, I, I just need the information. Yeah, ain't done it yet. Two weeks. I won't tell you who they are because you wouldn't know them anyway, but I won't tell you who they are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then I found out school sends out surveys and I don't like to fill them out either. Yeah. But theirs aren't four, you know, those aren't five minutes. There's like, you know, loaded with woke questions. <laughs> you know, you're getting answers out of you that you really don't want to answer. Because, you know, you don't want to jeopardize your job because they know who sent them back in. You know. Yeah, it's anonymous. An an anonymous. Which anonymous is it? Taylor E. At F Taylor E3. <laughs> oh, yeah, we know who he is. Yeah, praise God. All right. Don't forget, bring, bring the gifts for the kids. Come to the party. Sunday is ca cash. I'm not cash app. Sunday is app launch day. Extradition Church app launch day. We'll be explaining how to, how to download it and use it a little bit. And you can learn to navigate it. We now have set up for giving on it. So the first, you can put your credit card in one time. And then from then on, you can text to give. Okay. If you want to use the app. You don't have to, if you've got cash app and you're happy cash apping, I love cash app. So I'm not doing away with cash app. PayPal I don't like as much, but a lot of people still use it. So we leave that out there. Okay. All right, but now we have a Tithely account that um, comes in and um, does basically the same thing. All right, praise the Lord. Father, we bless the people who say Tithely give in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Send your electronic offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Stay warm out there. Boy, I tried to stay warm this morning. We were out at Camp Weaver with my kids and um, splitting wood and stacking it. It was 21 degrees, 22 degrees out when we got out there. And we weren't in the sun either. We were in the barn because it's, it's, it's dry in there. But then when this, there's no sun on you, you know, they had a little fire, a fire pit, gas-powered fire pit they brought out and put out there so they could go over and warm up a little bit here and there. I went over there and sat in my chair. They put my legs up and warmed up one time. <laughs> Turned the splitter off and went and warmed up. Why? Because it was cold. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Love you. God bless you. See you here uh, Sunday on, on live on Expedition Church. Come be with us in person at 6302 Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. Love to have you with us. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Love you. God bless you. And see you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.